Well, what should we talk about today? Hmm. Hey, how about this guy right here and his, his brother over there on the other side of the room? What are they? Well, pretty much the greatest darn things I've ever bought with my own money. Still don't know what they are? Stick around and find out. Hi, I'm Bob and you are in the United States of Analog and thank you for being here. Pardon my voice, I am uh, suffering <laughs> a little bit today from that that thing that's been going around for a few years, you know what it is. I can't say it because my kids say that, that YouTube will flag me somehow for some conspiracy video or something and I won't get as many views. But anyway, that's what's going on with me. But the best prescription, I think, is for you to hit that like button and uh, give me the thumbs up, subscribe, hit that notification bell and do all that stuff that'll give me joy and make me happy, all right? And I hope this video makes you happy because we're going to talk about speakers today, my favorite thing, speakers. And we're going to talk about your forever speaker and my forever speaker. And what is a forever speaker? Well, the forever speaker is the speaker that uh, that you you ultimately find that you, you that you can live with for the rest of your life. But, you know, when I really break it down, your forever speaker is the speaker you have now, right? Because until you find another one, that's your forever speaker. Now, speakers are my favorite thing to buy in our hobby. Uh, if you want to go listen to electronics or go pick out some interconnects and you want me to come with you, I've got to check my schedule, all right? But if you want to go listen to speakers, what time are we leaving? Because I'm driving, all right? I'm driving. And uh, they're, just, they're just fun. They're fun to own. They're fun to buy. They're fun to audition. They're fun to take out of the box. They're fun to, to watch. Watch those drivers going. I'm in love with speakers and I always have been. So let me tell you about my speaker history, all right? My speaker evolution. And I'll need, I'll need some notes because I've had a lot of speakers over the years going back to the 70s. Now, I had a little uh, system when I was in high school that my parents bought me that was, that was a Motorola, kind of a console on a metal stand, and these speakers swung out to the side. I can't even find a, a picture online, but here's a, here's a kind of a blurry old Kodak shot from the early 70s that uh, you can laugh at. Um, <laughs> you, uh, yeah, and after that, uh, when I got to college and, and my dad bought me my first real system, I think he was doing anything to try to keep me interested in school. He got me uh, Marantz 2215B, and man, did I ever love that thing. And I'm always on the lookout for uh, a version of that, a nice, a nice uh, living version that I, can, that I can buy. But I also had a Pioneer turntable with that. And I bought these speakers that were built in Texas called Toby Speakers. You've probably never heard of them, or maybe you have, I don't know. Uh, a friend of mine who was studying to be an audio engineer recommended them. So they were two-way bookshelves, and they lasted me for a good long while and were definitely an upgrade to that Motorola, um, Motorola console that I, that I had. Then I moved up to Pioneer HPM 40s. Then the JBL L26s. Now those speakers were dynamite. They were killer. And I still had my 2215B, or maybe I'd moved up to the uh, Marantz 1060 amplifier, possibly, if I remember right. And I just remember the day I brought home Elvis Costello's this year's model, threw it on the turntable, and played it on the L26. Let me tell you, and this is no lie, I'm still searching for that sound again. I'm still, every system I've bought since, every pair of speakers, and maybe I'm over overrating them, and maybe I'm, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Maybe I'm romanticizing the sound of that system, but I think that's the sound that I've been chasing all these years. L26s and uh, Marantz Electronics. Then I got into some DM110s in the 80s from BMW. Those were cool. Where did they go? Where did all these speakers go? Did I give them away? Did I trade them? I regret selling, trading, giving away any pair of speakers I ever owned. Think how much fun it would be to take those speakers out again and listen to them. What were we thinking? What were we thinking? What was I thinking when I sold a 1972 Telecaster? What was I thinking? We're all a little bit crazy in this hobby. 
Uh, I, I then graduated to Towers in the mid 80s with some NHT Super 2s. Uh, and I combined those uh, with the center channel version and the Super Zeros for surround in my first, like, kind of semi serious surround uh, home theater system. Klipsch RF3 Series 2s, BMW 683 Series 2s. I had some Sonus Faber Concertinos for a while. Beautiful, real walnut sides leather wrapped. Never got into them though. I don't know why. I, I think maybe I didn't have the, the right electronics for those, but I, I never quite bonded with those as beautiful as those looked. And, and I'll be honest with you, I still wish I had them though. I still wish I hadn't have sold them. And I know I remember the day I sold them to a guy in a parking lot. I met him in the parking lot and he handed over a thousand dollars and I gave him the speakers. Um, yeah, so, you know, a lot of history. Wish I had all those speakers back, but we're, we're not here to talk about those speakers. We're here to talk about the amazing Klipsch Forte 4s, Generation 4, which I do own. They're my personal property, and they're among my favorite things in the house, next to my kids and my wife and my dogs and all that stuff. They're, it's, it's my favorite thing. The Klipsch Forte 4s, are a thing of beauty. Now let's look at a few glamour shots while I tell you a little bit about them, but all the facts are online. The Fortes feature a titanium high frequency driver, a new mid-range compression Tratrix driver, now with mumps, those are those bumps in the corner there, 12 inch woofer, 15 inch passive radiator for that extra bass. This is a fourth generation model, as I've said. It's been revoiced with uh, upgraded crossovers, and a new cabinet, and of course those uh, mid-range mumps, and comes in four finishes. Mine are an American walnut with a pepper grill, which is great for me. It's a little darker. I prefer those uh, right now because uh, they're doing duty also in a home theater room. Also distressed oak with lamb's wool grill, natural cherry, and black. You know, I really do want those lamb's wool grills though. <laughs> I do, I want them. You get a 10-year warranty, and they cost five gur. Yeah, that's right, I said five gur. Five grand, five large. Uh, yeah, but you know what? I've had no buyer's remorse. I have never looked back and regretted that expenditure. I've never been happier with a pair of speakers, and if these are the only speakers I ever own for the rest of my life, uh, I will be completely happy. Now listen, if I had my druthers, all right? If my wife would approve. And if I had a beautiful mid-century modern home with expansive concrete floors and glass walls and no kids and no dogs running around, I would be living with Klipsch La Scala's. I absolutely would. I love the mid-century vibe. I love the look. I've never heard them outside of a showroom. I've never heard them in my home. Uh, but I know I would love them. But from what I can gather from all the reviews on YouTube, and thank you YouTube reviewers, thank you Andrew and everybody, the, the Fortes are as close as I'm going to get to that sound signature of the La Scala's. So I'm happy with them. My life doesn't permit for the La Scala's right now. My budget doesn't permit, but maybe, maybe someday. Now let me give you my top five reasons why the Forte 4s are so great. Number one, they're made in the USA, and that still means something. Hope, Arkansas, that's where they're made. I've never been there, but, but I salute you, Hope, Arkansas, and Klipsch factories there for all the fine work you do. Fantastic speaker, fantastic workmanship, made in the USA. I'm proud to own them. Thank you for that. Number two, build quality, right? Amazing wood amazing, well, it's not wood wood, but it's wood veneer, real wood veneer, book matched wood veneer, and it is fantastic. And again, I'll show you some of the shots of the grain. Um, just really, really proud to own these. These speakers are solid all the way through, and they have a presence about them, the build quality, just the, the sharp, crisp edges. Uh, I can't say enough about the build quality of the Klipsch Forte 4s. Number three, big box joy. Big box joy. Going all the way back to my L26s. Well, they weren't as big, but you know what I mean. Big box speakers. I love it. Listen, the Fortes were invented in 1985, I think I read. But they still have this mid-century 70s 
even vibe to them that that I just love. I love big box speakers. I think I'll always have a pair of big box speakers on hand. It just brings me such joy and the nostalgia of it. Uh, you just can't beat it. Number four, they are so rock and roll. I cannot emphasize this enough. The sound I get from these things, listen, it took me a while to break them in. It took the good part of a year to break them in and find the right spot in my room. I don't have a huge room, but I've got them about two feet off the wall. I wish I could bring them farther into the room, but I just can't, but I've got them to disappear. They image like crazy. The sound comes from all over the place, far beyond the edges of the speaker. The, the center image is, is, is dead perfect, but yet I'm still getting that rock and roll, punch you in the chest sound that you can only get from big box speakers and maybe only get from Klipsch, I don't know. Listen, they're not sponsoring me. Sponsor me, I would love it, but they, they're not sponsoring me. I'm just telling you, you get that big box, 70s rock and roll live, sound. And that being said, I've become a big fan in the last few years of Tone Poets, right? Uh, Blue Note Tone Poet releases on vinyl. And these things, listen, jazz is just another form of rock and roll, right? Amazing. What a pairing. I, I can't, I can't stress enough how hard these speakers hit you in the chest. You know, I can't emphasize this enough. I, I have all kinds of bookshelf speakers. I've listened and auditioned to speakers in showrooms. And every time I do, and I think I've heard the best, uh, I go home and I sit down in front of my Klipsch Fortes and nothing else compares. I heard some speakers the other day in a showroom that were many, many times more expensive than the Klipsch. 20, 30 times more expensive than the Klipsch. I couldn't wait to go home and listen to that music that I was auditioning those speakers with on my Klipsch Fortes because I knew it was gonna sound great. It made me wanna go home and listen to the value that I was getting out of the Klipsch Forte 4s. And really, that's, that's number five. Nothing else for me right now compares. Are there better speakers out there? Of course there are. Are there more expensive speakers out, out there? Of course there are. But there are four words that I've never been able to say in my lifetime, and that is money is no object. Money is always an object, okay? For the price, for that five gur, that five grand, that five large, I can't think of a better speaker uh, to own than the Klipsch Forte fours. Money is always going to be a factor for me. And for that reason, this is what makes my Forte fours my forever speaker. And maybe they're your forever speakers too. Give them a listen. Check them out. All right. Let's go listen to some clip speakers together. I'm driving. All right. Hey, thanks for watching. I really appreciate uh, you indulging me today and letting me uh, brag about my Fortes. I'll get over this thing that I've got uh, and uh, I'll see you soon in the United States of Analog. Oh yeah, yeah, I almost forgot. I had a number six. It's that magnetic grill snap.